Dzwoń do Polski za jednego centa za minutę na telefony stacjonarne bez żadnych dodatkowych kosztów. We are gathered today in order to greet and host the Mother of God in the copy of the icon of Our Lady of Częstochowa in its peregrination from ocean to ocean throughout the United States in prayer for the defense of life. Our Lady has already traveled from Vladivostok to Fatima. The Częstochowa icon visiting us today is a faithful copy of the miraculous Jasna Góra icon of the original size made by the traditional iconographic method. It shows Mary as a guide pointing to Christ with her right hand and leading all people to God, the giver of life. As our loving mother, she protects life. Lay defenders of life from various countries were inspired to organize this pilgrimage they realize that a global attack against the civilization of life is intensifying and that without God's help, it is not possible to achieve a victory in the struggle. For this reason, they launched this campaign by making an act of entrusting to the Mother of God at Yasna Gura the protection of the civilization of life and love. This act we will also renew today. Let us pray together with Mary for the defense of life in order that those who believe in Christ may serve the gospel of life openly and with love, protecting every conceived child, the elderly, and the sick. Niech będzie pochwalony Jezus Chrystus. Gromadzimy się dzisiaj, aby przywitać i gościć Matkę Bożą w kopii ikony częstochowskiej, peregrynującą od oceanu do, od, od, do oceanu, od władzy Wostoku do Fatimy, przez świat w intencji obrony życia. Odwiedzająca nas dzisiaj ikona częstochowska jest wierną kopią cudownego obrazu jasnogórskiego wielkości oryginalnej wykonaną tradycyjną metodą ikonograficzną. Przedstawia Maryję w typie przewodniczki, która wskazując prawą ręką na Chrystusa prowadzi wszystkich ludzi do Boga, dawcy życia. Jako kochająca matka chroni życie. Po raz pierwszy pielgrzymka ta prowadzi ze wschodu na zachód. W dniu 14 czerwca 2012 roku ikona częstochowska dotarła do władzy Wostoku i stanęła nad brzegiem Oceanu Spokojnego. Cała trasa ma objąć 18 tysięcy kilometrów i 23 kraje. W drodze do Polski przejechała już około 11 tysięcy kilometrów przez Rosję, Białoruś, Ukrainę, Łotwę i Litwę. Czekają na nią obrońcy życia w kolejnych krajach, którymi są Czechy, Słowacja, Węgry, Rumunia, Słowenia, Chorwacja, Włochy, Austria, Liechtenstein, Szwajcaria, Niemcy, Belgia, Wielka Brytania, Irlandia, Francja, Hiszpania i Portugalia. Módlmy się wspólnie z Maryją w intencji obrony życia, aby wszyscy wierzący w Chrystusa otwarcie i z miłością służyli Ewangelii życia, chroniąc każde poczęte dziecko oraz ludzi starszych i chorych. Ofiara mszy świętej będzie sprawowana w intencjach każdego poczętego życia o powrót do zdrowia dla Adasia i Aleksa i za zmarłych parafian i dobrodziejów, Franciszka Zarzeckiego, Feliksa i Stanisławę Rakoczy, Stanisława i Wiesławę Owanek, Jana i Wiktorię Zięba, 
Macieja i Annę Ziemba, Józefa Stachoń, Barbarę Hiebel, Mateusza i Bronisławę Staszel, Józefa i Janinę Korkosz oraz zmarłych z rodziny Ryciuk i Drąg. Relikwie świętego Jana Pawła II są na ołtarzu. Można podchodzić i oddać hołd relikwom po mszy świętej. Po apelu jasnogórskim będzie całonocna adoracja Najświętszego Sakramentu. Po mszy świętej Father Peter West będzie rozdawał specjalne obrazki z wizerunkiem Matki Bożej. Przed ołtarzem są specjalne skrzynki na donacje i intencje.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with the Spirit. Please be seated. I can see you, but probably you can see me. As the pastor of this parish, I welcome you all here. As we venerate this visiting icon of Our Lady of Częstochowa, it is a pleasure being a part of this extraordinary occasion. This is Our Lady's final stop in the US. The Black Madonna will soon continue on her worldwide pilgrimage to Mexico. As this is a special occasion, we have a special guest joining us for this celebration. I would like to welcome Father Robert Alunzi, my Dean of the Northwest Deanery and celebrant of this Holy Mass. I would like to welcome Father Pavel Bandurski, my provincial of the Society of Christ, on the right. I would like to welcome Peter, Father Peter West, the Madonna's custodian during her trip throughout the US and Canada. Father West will also preach about the Black Madonna icon on the left. Father Shannon Bouquet, President of Human Life International. <laughs> Father Jim Hyde, Pro-Life League for Cardinal George and custodian of Our Lady's Icon during her trip in Mexico. I would like to welcome also Mike Phelan, Director of Marriage and Respect, Respect Life for the Diocese of Phoenix. I can uh, see him, but he is with us. <coughs> and I would like to welcome our Missionary Sisters of Christ the King. <laughs> Dear friends, Brothers and sisters, heartfelt thanks to all priests joining the faithful as we jo ask Our Lady of Częstochowa for her intercession in defending life. May God bless our prayer efforts as Our Lady awakens all the people in every place she visits. May everyone be open to life. So now, a few words from the, uh, our main uh, celebrant, Father Robert. Brothers and sisters, good evening. Good evening. I don't hear you enough. Good evening. good evening. I feel so, so honored to be invited to celebrate this Mass at this very important occasion when we honor the black Madonna, and I think it is even fitting that a black man <laughs> does it. <laughs> Thank you very much. We have just uh, ended the month of October, which the bishops of the United States of America set aside as Respect Life Month, during which they invited all Catholics to pray, to reflect, and to renew their commitment to the defense of human life. And we have done so. Today, we begin this new month of the November in a very historic way by honoring our Mother Mary under the title of Our Lady of Testacova, also known as the Black Madonna, whose icon is here in our midst, with the same theme of respect for life. It is fitting that we do so th because Our Lady of Sestakova is the most ardent champion and defender of human life from conception to natural death. Our diocese as a whole and our parish named after her in particular is honored to be the last to 
host her revered icon before she leaves our country on our journey to Mexico. And with this honor, and with this great, momentous opportunity, brethren, let us now, before we proceed with the celebration of this Holy Eucharist, acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, the Son of God, who by being born of the Virgin Mary became our brother, have mercy on us. Christ, the Son of Man, who knows our weaknesses, have mercy on us. Lord, the only begotten Son of the eternal God, who will come to judge the living and the dead, have mercy on us. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Wysokości Bogu, a naszym i pokój ludziom dobrej woli. Chwalimy Cię, błogosławimy Cię, jemlimy Cię, wysławiamy Cię. Dzięki Ci składamy, o wielka jest chwała Twoja. Let us pray. God, who decided in the unfathomable plan of your love that the most holy Virgin Mary should give birth to the giver of life to the world, and who gave her to him as his helper in the work of redemption, grant that by her intercession we may protect the civilization of life and love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Czytanie z Księgi Apokalipsy Świętego Jana Apostoła. Świątynia Boga w niebie otwarła się i Arka Jego Przymierza ukazała się w Jego świątyni. Potem ukazał się wielki znak na niebie. Niewiasta obleczona w słońce i księżyc pod jej stopami, a na jej głowie wieniec z gwiazd dwunastu. Ukazał się też inny wielki znak na niebie. Oto wielki smok ognisty, ma siedem głów i dziewięć rogów, a na głowach siedem diademów. Ogon jego zmiata trzecią część gwiazd z nieba, i rzucił je na ziemię. Smok staną przed mającą urodzić niewiastą, aby skoro tylko porodzi, pożreć jej dziecko. I porodziła syna, mężczyznę, który będzie pasł wszystkie narody rózgą żelazną. Dziecko jej zostało porwane do Boga i do jego tronu. Niewiasta zaś zbiegła na pustynię, gdzie ma miejsce przygotowane przez Boga. I usłyszałem donośny głos mówiący w niebie. Teraz nastało zbawienie, potęga 
i królowanie Boga naszego i władza Jego pomazańca. Oto Słowo Boże. Stoi królowa po Twojej prawicy, stoi królowa po Twojej prawicy. Tron Twój Boże trwa na wieki, berłem sprawiedliwym berło Twego królestwa. Córki królewskie wchodzą na spotkanie z Tobą. Królowa w złocie z ofiru stoi po Twojej prawicy. Stoi królowa po Twojej prawicy. Posłuchaj, córko, spójrz ci na kłoń ucha. Zapomnij o swym ludzie, o domu Twego Ojca. Król pragnie Twego piękna, on Twoim Panem. Oddaj mu pokłon. Stoi królowa po Twojej prawicy. Córa królewska wchodzi pełna chwały, odziana w złoto głów. W szacie wrzożystej prowadzą ją do króla. Za nią prowadzą do Ciebie dziewicę, jej druchny. Stoi królowa po Twojej prawicy. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians by St. Paul. Brothers, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead came also through a human being. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pan z wami Słowa Ewangelii według świętego Łukasza W tym czasie Maria wybrała się i poszła z pośpiechem w góry do pewnego miasta w pokoleniu Judy. Weszła do domu Zachariasza i pozdrowiła Elżbietę. Gdy Elżbieta usłyszała pozdrowienie Maryi, poruszyło się dzieciątko w jej łonie, a Duch Święty napełnił Elżbietę. Wydała ona okrzyk i powiedziała, błogosławiona jesteś między niewiastami i błogosławiony jest owoc Twojego łona. A skądże mi to, że matka mojego Pana przychodzi do mnie? Oto skoro głos Twego pozdrowienia zabrzmiał w moich uszach, poruszyło się z radości dzieciątko w moim łonie. Błogosławiona jesteś, któraś uwierzyła, że spełnią się słowa powiedziane Ci od Pana. Wtedy Maria rzekła, wielbi dusza moja Pana i raduje się duch mój w Bogu, zbawcy moim, bo wejrzał na uniżenie swojej służebnicy. Oto bowiem odtąd błogosławić mnie będą wszystkie pokolenia, 
gdyż wielkie rzeczy uczynił mi wszechmocny, święte jest imię Jego, a Jego miłosierdzie z pokolenia na pokolenie nad tymi, którzy się Go boją. Okazał moc swego ramienia, rozproszył pyszniących się zamysłami serc swoich, strącił władców stronu, a wywyższył pokornych, głodnych nasycił dobrami, a bogatych z niczym odprawił. Ujął się za swoim sługą Izraelem pomny na swe miłosierdzie, jak obiecał naszym ojcom, Abrahamowi jego potomstwu na wieki. During those days Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zachariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the son of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believe that was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked upon the loneliness of his handmaid. Behold, from now on, will all ages call me blessed. The mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age to those who fear him. He has shown might with his arm, dispersed the arrogant of mind and heart. He has thrown down the rulers from their thrones, but lifted up the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things, the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy, according to his promise to our fathers, to Abraham, to his descendants forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. I thank Father Jacek for his welcome and uh, for agreeing to, uh, to host uh, the pilgrim icon of Our Lady of Czestochowa and to, uh, to be the last official stop as she continues her journey from the United States to go to, to Mexico, Central America, South America, and beyond. This has been an extraordinary pilgrimage for for me personally, I've been on the road now with uh, the Madonna, mostly, from August 21st of uh, last year until now. So, and I will, thank you. <laughs> and while I will uh, officially transfer custodianship of the icon today to uh, Father Jim Hyde from Chicago, uh, I... Um, I will always have Our Lady of Czestochowa very close to my heart. So I very, very much appreciate uh, the, the Father Jacek uh, welcome, welcome me here today. Niech będzie pokwalony Jezus Christus. I forgot to say that at the beginning. <laughs> okay. So for those of you who are, are not familiar with, with the, this pilgrimage, it was Eva Kovalevska, our country director of Human Life International in Poland, who wrote this beautiful icon. Human Life International, by the way, is the largest Catholic pro-life educational apostolate in the world. We have a presence in, in 80 different uh, countries. I was just uh, discussing with, with Father Robert uh, a trip that I, I took in, uh, in, 2000, um, in 2012, uh, 2011 now, I think it was, uh, to, to Uganda, where Father Jonathan Opio is our, our country director there. But we have a presence in, in Mexico as, as well. Uh, and uh, 
80 different countries throughout the world. But it was our country director in Poland who wrote this beautiful icon of Our Lady of Czestochowa, a labor of, of love, a, a, a labor of devotion, and an act of, uh, of confidence in the Blessed Virgin Mary. She wrote it in her spare time, and it doesn't usually take that long to write an icon, but it took her from 2004, when she first began the work on it, to 2011 to complete it with all the, the pro-life and family li life work that she does, uh, promoting life and family and defending marriage for Human Life International, it took her quite a long time. Uh, but finally, the icon was blessed in a special ceremony on January 28, 2012. And I was present at that ceremony and honored to be chosen to be one of three people to read an act of entrustment of the civilization of life and love into the hands of the Blessed Virgin Mary, a prayer which I read in English, and then it was also read in Polish and in Russian. And so Eva gave the icon as a gift to the Russian Orthodox pro-life movement it was they who conceived of the idea of taking the icon and a great campaign from, for life from the Pacific shore of Russia all the way to the Atlantic shores of Portugal. And so that is, that is what they did. And the idea behind it was that we would take the icon into the battle for, for life like uh, the, the ancient Jews would take the Ark of the Covenant with them into, uh, into battle. And when they were faithful to God, they were victorious over their enemies. So, uh, uh, both of our, our readings from the, the book of Revelation and also uh, from the, the Gospel of Luke show Mary as the new Ark of the Covenant. We see in the book of Revelation, it speaks of a, uh, the temple being opened and the Ark of the Covenant being seen in the sky and a woman clothed with the sun. Uh, the, the church sees Mary as the new Ark of the Covenant. The, the church sees uh, Mary as that woman clothed with the sun and she and her, her son do battle against the evil one symbolized as the dragon in the book of, of Revelation. And St. John Paul II, when he came to the United States, he came to St. Louis and he made reference to the Dred Scott Supreme Court decision. That case was first tried in St. Louis and it made its way to the Supreme Court and in 1857, the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that black people were inferior to white people, and as such, they had no rights that white people were bound to respect. St. John Paul II said that that Supreme Court decision declared an entire class of human beings, people of African descent, to be outside the Constitution's protection. But he said today, America is facing a similar trial. Today, the conflict is between a culture that affirms, cherishes, and celebrates life. And a culture that seeks to declare entire groups of human beings, the unborn, the terminally ill, the handicapped, and others who are considered to be unuseful, to be outside the boundaries of legal protection. We recognize that in order to fight this evil, now, which is really satanic, that we need supernatural help. We need to call on the intercession of the Mother of God as the new Ark of the Covenant. And again, in the, the Gospel of Luke, it talks about Mary going through the hill country as the Ark of the Covenant went through the hill country in the book of 2 Samuel. And then instead of David dancing before the Ark of the Covenant. John the Baptist leaps for joy in his mother's womb because he recognizes the presence of Jesus in Mary. 
And instead of David saying, who am I that the ark of the Lord should come to me? Mary cries out, Elizabeth cries out and says, who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to me? The Ark of the Covenant stayed in the house of Obed-Edom for three months, and the house of Obed-Edom was blessed. Mary stayed at the house of Zechariah for three months, and the house of Zechariah was blessed. So we see that St. Luke, who is known to be the writer of the icon of Our Lady of Chestahova, is really comparing Mary to the Ark of the Covenant. But while the old Ark of the Covenant contained the tablets of the law, the manna that fell in the desert, and the staff of Aaron, a symbol of his priesthood, the, the, the Mary contained Jesus Christ, who is God himself. And St. John in his Gospel says, While the law came through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is greater than the manna. He is the bread of life. Jesus Christ is greater than the staff of Aaron. He is the eternal high priest. So we call upon the intercession of the mother of God. You know, even in Russia, the honor of the icon of Our Lady of Chestahova, they believe that the icon was actually written by St. Luke the Evangelist on a tabletop that came from the home of the Holy Family. And according to tradition, we know that the icon was hidden away in a cave in the year 70 AD when Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans, but then later found by St. Helena when she came to the Holy Land to identify the holy places. And she found a relic of the true cross and holy women who had watched over the icon for centuries had trusted it to her care and she took it back with her to Constantinople, where her son, the emperor, built a beautiful chapel for her and remained there for 500 years. And it was once given as a uh, wedding gift to the princess of Ruthenia and kept at the royal palace at Bels, where it came under attack of the, the Muslim Tartars. And so it had to be moved west for safekeeping intending to bring it to Upper Silesia as they were going, just intending simply to pass through Chestahova, the horses pulling the wagon wouldn't move. And so Prince Ladislaus, who was moving her, saw that as a sign that that's where the icon should remain. And so she has been in Poland since the year 1382. Excuse me for those of you who already know this history, but some, some of them, I'm sure, who are here or are hearing about Our Lady of Chestahova for the first time uh, may, may not know it. So Our Lady came to, the, to uh, Chestahova in 1382 and has been cared for by the Pauline Fathers ever since, uh, who came from the nation of Hungary to care for her, and they called the place Yasnagora which means bright mountain or shining or luminous hill. As Father Robert said, she is called the Black Madonna. And there are various theories about why she has dark skin. Some say it's the candles burning over the years that darken the image. Others that she was damaged by fire. Others that she naturally has dark skin. And we know that when Our Lady appeared as Our Lady of Guadalupe in the 16th century, she appeared as a dark-skinned woman. They call her La Morenita in, uh, in Mexico. There was a historian from the 14th century who claimed to have seen three paintings by St. Luke in which the Blessed Mother had skin uh, the color of wheat, golden brown. You know, when I was in New York City with this icon, and I was giving an explanation of the various ways that, you know, think, things that people think of why Our, our Lady's skin is dark. I said uh, that I'm sure that Our Lady had darker skin than I did. And uh, the New York priest, who New Yorkers are known for their wisecracks, uh, he said, Father Peter, 
Everybody in this church has darker skin than you do. <laughs> so really, of course, it shouldn't matter to us. But, uh, you know, this is people are curious about these things. Others say that it was simply a, a, a way, uh, that, that they, uh, a style of iconography or the way that, that wood ages over the centuries. Another commonly asked question about the icon are the scars that are on Our Lady's cheeks. And this was done by the Hussites, followers of a renegade Czech priest by the name of Jan Hus. They didn't believe in the sacred images and or the veneration of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so they, they broke into the sanctuary. They stole the jewels that were on the icon. They put her in a cart, intending to take her out of town. And the horses only, again, they only got a short distance, and they stopped. And they wouldn't move. And so in their anger, they slashed Our Lady with a sword three times. And they threw her to the ground and broke her into three pieces. The Pauline Fathers were able to recover the icon and repair her somewhat, but yet the scars remain as a visible reminder that Our Lady has suffered, and therefore she can identify with people who are suffering. I think that is why so many people are attracted to her. They say that even after the attack on the icon, the icon only grew in the esteem of the people. It grew, it became to be more popular than ever before. Some of the symbols on the icon, the blue is symbolic of Mary's humanity, the red symbolic of Christ's divinity. The gold is a reminder of eternity or heaven. And it's also a reminder of the dignity and the sanctity of every human life. We see the gold shining through the clothing of Jesus and Mary. The gold is always going to represent a resurrected or transfigured figure that has overcome sin and overcome death. And St. John Paul II said that every human being is a manifestation of God, a sign of his presence, and a trace of his glory. And last year also, Pope Francis said that every human being is God's masterpiece, including the unborn, the elderly, the sick, the handicapped, and the poor. Because we are made in the image and likeness of God, and we're destined to share in God's eternal glory. And that is why he said that every human life must be treated with the utmost reverence and respect including the lives of the unborn, the elderly, the sick, the handicapped, and the poor. Now we see that also Mary points. She points in the, in the, in the icon, and this is a special type of icon. In Greek it is called hodogitria, which means one who shows the way, one who guides pilgrims on their way. So perfect for our purposes, for, for a from ocean to ocean pilgrimage in defense of human life. She points as if to say the last words we hear her speak in all of the scriptures. When at the wedding feast of Cana, she said to the waiters, do whatever he tells you. And that is what Mary seems to say to us today. Do whatever he tells you. Love my son. Obey the commandments. Love God with your whole heart, mind, and soul. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Respect every human life because it is created in the image and likeness of God. And we see also as Mary is pointing Jesus' blessing, two fingers extended like this, stand for the fact that it, Jesus is both God and man. And then also three fingers together like this, which stand for the Holy Trinity, one God, yet three divine persons that share in the one divine nature. The stars we see that are on Our Lady's uh, garment also represent the perpetual virginity of Mary. If it was symmetrical, we see that one is blocked by Jesus' wrist. But the three stars together represent the perpetual virginity 
Mary is virgin before, during, and after the birth of Christ, which protects our belief in his divinity. Also, we see that Jesus holds in his hands a book. It is the book of life. And it's a reminder that he will come again to judge the living and the dead. And he reminds us in the Gospel of Matthew that our judgment will consist on how we treat those who are least among us. And just before he left the United States in 1987, St. John Paul II said something I think is prophetic about the right to life in America when he said this, that every human being, no matter how vulnerable or helpless, no matter how young or how old, no matter how healthy, handicapped, or sick, no matter how useful or productive for society, is a being of inestimable worth, created in the image and likeness of God. And he said this was the dignity of America, the reason that we exist, the very condition for our survival, and the ultimate test of our greatness, to respect every human being, especially the weakest, and the most defenseless ones, those as yet unborn. But we live in a society in which has rejected these prophetic words, and we continue to have 1.2 million abortions every year in the United States, with one out of five pregnancies in the United States ending in the violence of abortion, and a lack of respect for life in its beginning stages leading to a lack of respect for life in its end stages, and we hear more calls for physician-assisted suicide and euthanasia. We have four states today that have legalized physician-assisted suicide. Here again, doctors using their God-given skills not to serve life, but to take life. And then we have the attack on marriage. Marriage, which is a divine institution between one man, one woman, united for life, and open to the transmission of new human life. We have uh, the current administration trying to force even uh, groups like the Little Sisters of the Poor to pay for contraception, sterilization, and abortion. California, the state of California, for trying to force Catholic institutions to pay for abortions. The mayor of Houston recently asking for the sermons of pastors about homosexuality a blatant violation of the First Amendment to the Constitution, which guarantees freedom of religion and freedom of speech. So we see that there's enormous attacks, but we have confidence in our Blessed Mother that she will hear and she will answer our prayers. Our Lady, so far, has gone from Vladivostok, Russia, to, to uh, Nazare, Portugal. She went from all through two continents, across the continent of uh, uh, three continents now. She's gone through the, the continent of Asia and the, the continent of, of Europe. She went through all eight different time zones of Russia. She went to Siberia, where there are hardly any roads, to Moscow itself, to Belarus, Ukraine, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Croatia, Slovenia, Croatia, Italy, Austria, Liechtenstein, Switzerland, Germany, Belgium, Great Britain, Ireland, where most of my ancestors came from. I am not Polish. And then to, uh, and then from there to France. Spain, Portugal, where she reached the Atlantic shores of, of Portugal. And we had a beautiful welcoming ceremony for her on August 24th in, at St. Clement's Island in, in Maryland, where the first English Catholics first came uh, seeking religious freedom. And the first mass in the English-speaking colonies was offered on St. Clement's Island on March 25th, the Solemnity of the Annunciation. Uh, in, uh, uh, in 1634. 
So from there now, she's gone through 46 states and also, to, for, yeah, 46 states and also to parts of Canada as well. Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, Cumbermere, and also to Vancouver. I met some people earlier that I met in Vancouver. So I'm, I know there's a lot of people here from Poland, but I think maybe they, they came from the, the, excluding Poland, they've come from the, the longest distance away to be here. So we, with, with what, a, what an extraordinary uh, event. And as Our Lady has, has traveled, there have been fruits from this pilgrimage. For example, in Russia, where the average woman over the course of her lifetime has eight abortions. Women were coming up to the icon of Our Lady of Czestochowa, and they were spontaneously confessing sins of past abortions. Hearts were being healed. Sinners were being reconciled to God. The Blessed Mother looks upon us with eyes of mercy. Her only intention is to draw sinners to her divine Son, who is the font of life and mercy. Also, we saw in Russia that, that men were making pledges to swear off alcohol and drugs, which we know is a great destroyer of lives and families, especially there, but also here and throughout the world. And then also in France, children came up to the icon as if they were running up to their own mother. And of course, that is what Mary is. She is the mother of us all. And what a delight it was for me to bring the icon to so many schools on my journey throughout the United States and to see the reactions that children would, would have to, to the icon and share with them the beautiful holy cards of Our, Our Lady of, of Czestochowa. For example, I remember in, uh, in Philadelphia, there was a young African-American boy who was looking at the icon for quite a long time, and he turned to his father and he said, that picture is staring at me. He had a real sense of the, the spiritual presence and the icon of, of the Blessed Mother and the, and, the, and the Christ child. Or another little girl in North Carolina who would walk up and down in front of the icon with her mother, and she would point to it, and she would say, baby Jesus, baby Jesus, <laughs> really developing a relationship with, with our, our Lord. So it was beautiful to see. But, you know, shortly after she arrived, uh, a few days after she arrived in the United States, we had her before a place where they do late-term abortions. And that day... Uh, that was the, the actual feast day of Our Lady of Czestochowa, August 26th. And we processed through the streets uh, with the icon after Mass at Mother Seton Church in Germantown, Maryland. Sing, we were praying the rosary and singing hymns in front of a place where they do late-term abortions. That day, three women changed their minds, decided not to go through with planned abortions. We know of 11 lives at least that have been saved through the intercession of Our Lady in the United States, and four abortion mills that have shut their doors as a result of Our Lady's visit. One in Corpus Christi, Texas, shut down just before the solemnity of Corpus Christi. Another in, uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, and then another in Kansas City, and the one in Sharonville, Ohio, closed down the order to close it came down on the solemnity of the assumption. And then also uh, it went into effect. The judge's order went to effect when we celebrate the queenship of Mary. So I really believe that our Blessed Mother put her signature on that one. And even just a few days ago, when we were praying with the icon in front of an abortion mill in Tempe, that day... The Planned Parenthood closed their doors and did not do any abortions that day. I can hope that there will be even greater fruits as Our Lady continues her journey. And uh, that as she goes on to, to Mexico and Central America, South America and beyond. Father Hyde is going to tell you about a little bit about 
his future plans for, for Mexico and the, and the great connection between Our Lady of Guadalupe and Our, Our Lady of, of Chestahova. Of course, she's the same lady. <laughs> Just uh, looks a little different, but <laughs> she's, the, she's the same lady, and her only intention is to draw us closer to her divine son and to crush the power of Satan and put an end to the culture of death. After the Mass... I invite you to come forward to venerate the icon. Uh, there are beautiful holy cards from Human Life International. We have plenty of them for you. If you want to take more than, more than one, you're welcome to them. You can touch them to the icon. Keep them as a remembrance of the visit of Our Lady here today. And there's a beautiful prayer for life on the back addressed to the Blessed Virgin Mary by St. John Paul II from his encyclical letter Evangelium Vitae, the Gospel of Life. And St. John Paul II, uh, he said, he called Evangelium Vitae, the Gospel of Life, the key to understanding his whole pontificate. So we, we look forward to bringing about the fulfillment of his vision of the triumph of the culture of life over the culture of death. You'll also, you'll see some pamphlets there about the nature and the purpose of the Formosan Ocean Pilgrimage and Defense of Human Life. Also, a pamphlet explaining the work of Human Life International. I hope that you'll pick that up as well. You can also write out your prayer petitions, your personal prayer petitions, and there's a box in front of the icon marked for prayer petitions, and put those prayer petitions in the box. There's also another box for donations for the pilgrimage. And we do depend on the generous support of people like yourselves in order to continue the work of defending life and family and for the, you know, the pilgrimage itself. So uh, I, I ask you to uh, thank you in, in advance for, for your generosity. Uh, I hope that you can uh, help, help the cause. And then also there's a place to sign up for our emails and, and newsletters so that we can keep you informed about as Our Lady travels on to Mexico and the rest of the pilgrimage and also the worldwide work that Human Life International is doing in the United States, in Poland, in Mexico, in Uganda, and throughout the world in defending life, marriage, and family. But most of all, what I ask of you today is your prayers. Your prayers for the continued fruitfulness of this pilgrimage. Your prayers for Father Jim Hyde. And my assistant, Chris Morales, has been with me since uh, March 17th, the Feast of St. Patrick, and um, has been through uh, mo most a good por portion of this pilgrimage with me. He is, I'm going to go be going on back, back to Virginia to continue work with Human Life International. But Chris is going to go on with Father Hyde to, uh, to Mexico. And they've done some travels together before in Mexico, so they're well suited for this work. But please pray for them that, and, and that they'll be safe, first of all, of course, but then also that their mission will be successful and fruitful and that Our Lady will hear our prayers, that she will crush the power of Satan and bring about the triumph of the culture of life. Shrej Boja. Wierzę w jednego Boga, Ojca Wszechmogącego, Stworzyciela nieba i ziemi. Z Boga prawdziwego, zrodzony, a nie stworzony, współistotny Ojcu, a przez Niego wszystko się stało. On to dla nas ludzi i dla naszego zbawienia stąpił z nieba. I stąpił do usuwany również za nas pod Pancuszem Piłatem, 
zostaniemy przy najgorsze Panie. I zarpiecie dnia trzeciego, jego znamy pismo. I stąpił do niego. We now bring our prayers and petitions to the Father with confidence trusting that he is always attentive to our prayers. Let us pray for Pope Francis for the strength, health, and protection he needs to proclaim the gospel of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Today, the human embryo has become an object of commerce, pseudoscientific experiments, and selection. We ask that human children may not be killed in order to obtain stem cells for cloning or genetic experiments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Módlmy się za rodziców, aby z ofiarną miłością i wielkim zaufaniem Bogu przyjęli i wychowali na chwałę Bożą każde swoje poczęte dziecko. Ciebie prosimy. Módlmy się za wszystkich, którzy swoją postawą i działalnością wspierają sprawę obrony życia, aby ich zaangażowanie na rzecz ratowania dziecka poczętego zagrożonego aborcją przyczyniło się do budowania cywilizacji życia. Ciebie prosimy. Millions of children die as a result of the use of the so-called morning after pill by young people without their parents' knowledge or sometimes with it, because their parents ignore the matter. Lord, awaken our consciousness and protect the lives of our children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who live in nursing homes, and especially for those who are alone or in pain, that we might cherish the gift of their wisdom and the perduring example of their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Wiele kobiet i wielu mężczyzn zamknęło swoje serca dla poczęcia swojego dziecka. Panie, wybaw ich od lęku przed dzieckiem i wspomóż w tak nieraz trudnych sytuacjach życiowych. Ciebie prosimy. Nas, Naszym obowiązkiem jest modlić się za siebie nawzajem. Prośmy o powrót do zdrowia dla Adasia, Zbyszka i Aleksa oraz prośmy o radość w niebie dla naszych bliskich zmarłych. Józefa Stachoń, Franciszka Zarzeckiego, Feliksa i Stanisławy Rakoczy, Stanisława i Wiesławy Owanek, Jana i Wiktorii Ziemba, Macieja i Anny Ziemba, Mateusza i Bronisławy Staszel, Józefa i Janiny Korkosz oraz zmarłych z rodziny Ryciuk i Drak. Ciebie prosimy. Wszyscy jesteśmy powołani do podejmowania obrony życia człowieka, i Jego godności w duchu wiary, nadziei i miłości. Módlmy się, abyśmy sprostali temu wezwaniu. Ciebie prosimy. Let us pray for ourselves, that by the intercession of the Mother of God, we may be able to protect the civilization of life and love in the contemporary world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, who gave the most the Holy Virgin Mary, glorious mother of your Son, to all who call on her for protection. Grant that by her intercession we may be strong in faith and may persevere in love, building the civilization of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Za chwilę do ołtarza zbliży się procesja z darami, które złożymy Bogu jako wyraz wdzięczności i miłości. Biblia. Słowa Jezusa, abyśmy nigdy nie byli obojętni na Słowo Boga. The Bible. The words of Jesus, so that we may never be indifferent to the word of God. Po 
płynąca świeca, światłość zmartwychwstałego Jezusa, abyśmy umieli kro kroczyć drogą światłości do Boga. The burning candle, the light of the risen Jesus. May we walk in the light, which is the way to God. Kwiaty. Piękność Stworzyciela Boga. Flowers. Beauty of God the Creator. Praca ludzkich rąk. Przyjmijmy Jezusa dobre czyny do naszych serc i rąk. The work of human hands. May we accept the good deeds of Jesus into our hearts and hands. Owoce. Przynosimy owoce jako znak Twojej dobroci. Boże, zechć Ci pomnożyć owoce dobroci w naszych sercach. Fruits. We bring fruit as a sign of God's goodness. Lord, may you multiply the fruit of kindness in our hearts. A oto chleb powszedni. Chleb, znak jedności w Chrystusie. Aby nam nigdy nie brakowało ziemskiego chleba. Here our daily bread. Bread is the sign of the unity of Christ. Give us each day our daily bread. Woda i wino, którą przynosimy Ci, Pani Jezu, złączoną w jeden napój. Lord Jesus, we bring to you water and wine, which join in one spiritual drink when we drink from your cup. Chleb. To jest chleb, który przemieniasz w swoje ciało, Panie Jezu, aby każdy mógł się posilić Tobą jak chlebem. This is the bread which becomes your body, Lord Jesus. May we all join in this supper as we eat your bread. Oh, Maria, you'll be my pillow. 
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your son, no petition may go unanswered, no request may be made in vain through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the humanity of our, your only begotten son come, O Lord, to our aid. And may The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly even to earth's ends you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim the death of the Lord and the resurrection of Until you come and be. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy.
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her blessed spouse, Joseph, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, our God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Ojcze nasz, któryś jest w niebie, święcie imię Twoje, przyjdź królestwo Twoje. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory, and the earth, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's joyfully share that peace with one another. Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Panie, nie jestem godzien, abyś przyszedł do mnie, ale powiedz tylko słowo, a będzie uzdrowiony.
Confirm our resolve, O oh God, by the life-giving body and blood of your Son, that we may live always for others and cherish your sacred gift of human life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Proszę usiądźmy. Uh, teraz będzie modlitwa krótka przed duchową adopcją i nasi aszerzy będą rozdawali a, świeczki tym osobom, którzy chcą uczestniczyć, moi drodzy, a, w duchowej adopcji. A teraz oddaję głos. A, a, Father Peter will say a few words, then uh, Father Jim. I just wanted to uh, also let you know that I offered my mass for uh, your intentions and for the intentions of all the people who have offered their, their prayers, both uh, uh, written and unwritten, about all of the, uh, the prayer petitions that we've collected uh, since the beginning of the pilgrimage are, are under the uh, icon of Our, Our Lady of uh, Czestochowa. So uh, remember to write out your prayer petitions. I think it was when I was at the March for Life in January that I saw Father Jim Hyde uh, giving a, an interview to a Spanish language television station, and I had the idea that Father Hyde would make an excellent uh, uh, custodian of the icon in Mexico. So uh, I, we talked about it then at the at the March for Life, and talked about it with uh, Lech uh, Kowalewski, uh, who uh, who was the coordinator for the whole international pilgrimage and the uh, the husband of the iconographer. And uh, Father, Father Hyde was, uh, it was open to the idea. And so I'm, I'm glad that uh, Father Hyde, who speaks fluent Spanish and is the pro-life delegate for Cardinal George in Chicago, is available and willing to do this work. And he's going to tell you a little bit more about the connection between Our Lady of Guadalupe and Our Lady of Czestochowa. So F Father Jim, you're, you're the official custodian now. Ja jestem Sean's James, and I'm from Chicago, and I'm learning my Polish, and it is a delight, and I remember when I was in high school, I grew up in Chicago, many of you probably have visited, maybe have lived there, and it had the largest Polish diaspora in the world outside of Poland, especially in the Americas. Well, when I was in high school, the Polish Pope came, Karol Wojtyla, 
he came to our city in 1979 and he offered a beautiful mass in our beautiful lakefront where the early missionaries 400 years ago came from France. And there we had a beautiful mass. And it was at that mass that he, he put out a call. And there were people there from many of our parishes, probably a half million people. Some might have been from St. Stanislaus Koska Parish, which was one of the largest Polish parishes in the world and right in the center of our city, which still exists today. They might have been from St. Hedwig's. And if you go to St. Hedwig's, on the church wall, there are lists of young men who died in the Second World War. Hmm? Some of them might have been from St. Hedwig's. Or at St. Constance, where I'm a res resident right now, at a Polish-speaking parish. But there the Pope came. And he thanked the church because the ch Chicago church, we supported Poland in her hour of need. And physically, materially, spiritually, we provided a lot of funds and support for the Polish church and its struggle for freedom and to pr keep the faith alive in a dark moment in not only Polish history, but European history, world history. Mm -hmm. And because of his work and the work of many the Polish people became free, free at last. And so he came to thank us. And there were people like myself who grew up in a neighborhood with many Poles. I'm non Polish myself, like Father Peter, I have a little Irish in me, and uh, French. And so we were influenced by Polish culture and the beauty of the culture, so much so that this Pope also inspired that great love and appreciation for Polish culture. And so he told us at that great gathering in 1979, don't be afraid. He took the words of Jesus in the scriptures. I'm with you until the end of time. And he said that we were a pluribus unum, many peoples but one, many races but one, many languages. And isn't that the case in the family of God? Here we have a, a brother priest from Uganda celebrating the mass from the great land of Uganda with great missionaries there. We have many non-Poles here and the Polish community be before us. And so God has brought many miracles to be one people. And so when we bring the Madonna, the Black Madonna down to Mexico, yo voy a presentarla en frente de todo. I'm gonna present her to December the 12th. We're going to have Chastahova meets Guadalupe. <laughs> Chastahova meets Guadalupe. And in that way, and there's a beautiful statue, if you have ever been there, of John Paul II. Because right before John Paul went to Poland to set the, the, the course free in Polish history for freedom and to strengthen the faith, he first went to Mexico, did he not? And he was received there, and he went to Guadalupe, and they love him there. He, is, he came up with the idea of the continent of life and love. And this is the continent of a pluribus unum of many people, but one continent of faith and hope. And so John Paul's vision, in a moment of such discord and pain and division, and as Father Peter so aptly said, we have so many issues, so many, and we're gonna do a spiritual adoption in a moment. Lives are being threatened each and every day, and we have, Christ, we have a lot of work with the Mexican church. We, we, we do a lot of collaboration. We help their crisis pregnancy centers. We promoted the baby bottle project. In other words, especially in Phoenix with your Bishop Thomas Olmsted, this presentation of the Madonna will rekindle something that John Paul, our dear Pope, whom we love very much and who was canonized, there's only been two popes that have been, been named the Great, Gregory the Great, and John Paul the Great. And it is incumbent upon us, you and I, to take this legacy. And it's our responsibility, brothers and sisters, to, to, to keep the work going. And our people need this. And in, in this day and age, when there's so much darkness and pain, when life is so cheapened, and where we fail to love and we, we hurt each other, to, to have a new culture. And we can do it. Can we, right? Yes. E pluribus unum is nova rogina. 
It is the new family of faith. So, thank you so much for your prayers. I, as Father Peter said, pray for us. We're going to cover town after town in Mexico. We're going down, down there, and we're going to proudly display uh, Our Lady of Chestahova for all to see and to, to, want, to marvel throughout the Americas. And so we have been invited to do a spiritual adoption, and we've been passed out candles for uh, brothers and sisters in the faith who would like to take this oath to spiritually adopt a child. And in doing so, we're, we stand in solidarity with, with life. And we know, especially women know, that uh, you know, this is no easy process, but uh, we, especially men stand with them to help them in their pregnancies, to support them. And if anyone's in a crisis, we're with them. So we're, I'm gonna say a short little prayer, and then we'll do the oath for those who would like to join me in that oath. And then I'm gonna encourage you to do three things. So I'll say the prayer first, and uh, so keep your open hearts open to hear. I glorify you, Father Almighty, Lord of heaven and earth. Death. For Please stand. For you have hidden things from the mighty and clever, but have revealed them to the merest children. Yes, Father, this was your gracious will. Most Holy Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and all your angels and saints, led by a desire to help children in the womb who are in danger of abortion. And those who are going to take the oath, please join me. I, James Hyde, others, undertake by oath on this day, please repeat after me, undertake by oath on this day to spiritually adopt one child, a child whose name is known only to God. I promise to pray for this child every day for nine months to intercede in his behalf that his life may be spared and to obtain for him God's grace to live a just and holy life. Every day of these nine months I will say, one decade of the rosary for this child. Second, the special daily prayer. Third, my own personal undertaking. Teraz powstańmy, dokona się zawierzenie Matce Bożej cywilizacji życia, najpierw w języku polskim, a później w języku angielskim. Niech każdy z nas otworzy swoje serce i również w swoim sercu dokona zawierzenia siebie, tej wspólnoty parafii, naszych rodzin, wszystkich naszych relacji, spraw, tego wszystkiego, o czym żyjemy, również szczególnie matek, które Pragnęłby mieć dzieci, a nie mogą i te, które już noszą dzieci pod swoim sercem. Najświętsza Mario Panno, przeczysta Matko Boża, niepokalana dziewico, w Twoje ręce powierzamy wielką sprawę ochrony cywilizacji, życia i miłości. Żyjemy w trudnym czasie wielkiego, globalnego ataku cywilizacji śmierci. Ginie bardzo wielu niewinnych ludzi. Nienarodzone dzieci, starzy i chorzy. Liczba ofiar przekracza już dwa miliardy ludzkich istnień. 
Każdego dnia ginie kolejne 50 tysięcy dzieci w łonach matek. Wielu ludzi w ogóle nie chce mieć dzieci. Coraz powszechniejsze stają się środki niszczące płodność i życie. Narasta niepłodność małżonków. Ludzkie dziecko staje się produktem nowoczesnej technologii, dawcą komórek i organów. Wytwarza się dzieci o określonych cechach, pozostałe poddając selekcji. Setki tysięcy zamrożonych, poczętych dzieci czeka w ciekłym azocie pomiędzy życiem a śmiercią. Międzynarodowe prawo stanowione przez ludzi odmawia ochrony prawnej życiu poczętego dziecka. Kolejne kraje legalizują eutanazję. Narasta atak na małżeństwo i rodzinę. Najświętsza Matko, obiecujemy Ci, że ze wszystkich sił będziemy chronić ludzkie życie, zwłaszcza małe i bezbronne. Stajmy przed Tobą, Matko Zbawiciela, z pełną świadomością, że sami nie jesteśmy w stanie wygrać tego globalnego zmagania. Stań na czele ruchów obrony życia i prowadź nas. Ochroń życie, ocal rodziny, dodaj nam sił. Uproś u swego Syna zwycięstwo cywilizacji życia i miłości. Amen. Blessed Virgin Mary, Immaculate Mother of God, Immaculate Virgin, into your hands I entrust the great cause of the protection of the civilization of life and love. We live in a difficult time of a great attack by the global civilization of death. So many innocent people are killed, the unborn, the elderly, and the sick. The death toll is now more than two billion human beings. Every day, another 50,000 children are killed in the wombs of their mothers. Many people do not want to have children. Methods of damaging fertility in life are becoming increasingly common. The infertility of spouses is increasing. The human baby is a product of modern technology, donor cells, and organs. Children with specific characteristics are prepared, while others are subjected to selection. Hundreds of thousands of unborn children are, are waiting frozen in liquid nitrogen between life and death. International law made by people denies legal protection of the unborn child's life. More and more countries are legalizing euthanasia. The attack on marriage and the family is growing. Blessed Mother, we promise you that we will work with all our strength to protect human life, especially that of the young, the weak, and the defenseless. We stand before you, Mother of our Savior, in the full knowledge that we are not able to win this global struggle. Guide and lead the movements that strive to protect life, defend life, save the family, give us strength. Pray to your son for victory, for the civilization of life and love. Proszę usiądźmy na chwilę. A takie krótkie informacje. Teraz jeszcze, moi drodzy, ten obraz pozostanie do godziny dziewiątej tutaj. Później o godzinie dziewiątej będziemy mieli apel jasnogórski, po którym to apelu obraz zostanie wprowadzony do kościoła. Um, Now we'll finish the mass. There will be final blessing. After that, we'll go um, to the church. But the uh, the icon will be here till nine o'clock. So after the uh, nine o'clock, after the prayer, we'll bring the uh, icon to the church. Um, moi drodzy, kiedy będzie już um, ikona Matki Bożej w kościele, będziemy mieli całą nocną adorację. Zapraszam Was bardzo serdecznie, jeżeli może, możecie przyjechać, to przez całą noc będzie możliwość żeby wejść tutaj, żeby można się było pomodlić. Um, you know, have to remember that, that after uh, we will bring the, uh, uh, the icon to the church, the whole night will be opportunity to have, to come to pray. So uh, think about that. You can call your friends and they can come and pray for all these people who need uh, our prayers. Mm, 
ksiądz Piotr West będzie rozdawał specjalne, jak powiedział, w czasie kazania ulotki z wizerunkiem Matki Najświętszej. Będzie można dotknąć Matkę Najświętszą. Nawet teraz, jeżeli podejdziecie, to Father Peter powiedział, że możecie dotknąć ikon, ikonę Matki Najświętszej, pomodlić się, dotknąć obrazek. Będziecie mieli specjalną pamiątkę. Father Peter will distribute uh, to you um, you know pictures with our lady of Częstochowa and he allowed us to uh, touch um, the icon so you can uh, come to the icon and you can touch and you can pray jeszcze jedna rzecz, że mamy tutaj relikwie Jana Pawła II, a nie wszyscy może rok temu mieli możliwość honorowania tych relikwii, także dzisiaj możecie podejść, dotknąć, ucałować te relikwie Jana Pawła II, wielkiego Polaka, o którym dzisiaj tak bardzo miło było słyszeć wiele dobrych rzeczy. Thank you very much for coming, for being with us. Thank you very, very, very much. May God bless you. Bardzo dziękuję Wam za to, że przyszliście, że mogliśmy się wspólnie modlić i będziemy mieli możliwość jeszcze modlenia się dalej. A teraz przyjmijmy Boże błogosławieństwo z rąk księdza Roberta. Before the final blessing, um, on behalf of Bishop Thomas Olmsted, whose representative I am as his dean in this Northwestern Deanery, I would like to sincerely thank Father Jacek for the great leadership he provides to this parish. And uh, also we thank the provincial for giving us this great man, mm -hmm. Father Jacek, to be our part one of us as a shepherd. Thank you very much. <laughs> and of course, he doesn't work alone. He works with a team. I, I've seen some of the nuns the sisters who work with her, with him, and all those who support this ministry here. So thank you very, very much. I want to thank also all my brother priests for the wonderful support they gave me. I was at first nervous, but as soon as I saw them, I became very comfortable, and I think it was a wonderful <laughs> celebrating this Mass with all of you. Thank you very much. And I thank you all for spending this night very fruitfully in front of our mother, sucking from our love, sucking from her protection and affection, and also giving us that impetus now to go out full of zeal and full of enthusiasm to speak for life, to protect life, and to be on the forefront in every opportunity we have to work to save at least one life through our prayers, and through every action that we do. And we are told that by a testimony I heard not long ago by a lady called Abby who was an abortionist. She worked for the abortion industry for a long time. She testified that the moments when Christians prayed the rosary at the abortion clinic, the rate of those who turned out dropped by 70%. 70% of uh, women change their minds when prayers were being done and so we have a great example our lady of Testakova who champions this cause so together with our fathers who are taking the lead in this let us truly pray and support life I'm not adding another homily to this so <laughs> the Lord be with you and may the almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our mass is ended. Let us go forth and defend life. Wszyscy aniołowie, Tobie mocy i niebiosy, Peruby, Serafinowie, Ślombie czystej pieśni głosy, Święty, święty na święty. Yes.
Rzesza, Bóg proroków pełen chwały, Tobie hołdy nieść pospiesza, Męczenników orszak biały, Ciebie poprzez okrąg ziemi, Z głębi serca ile zdoła, Kościoła, niezmierzonej Ojca chwały, Syna Słowo wieku iste, z Duchem Wszechświat wielbi cały, Królem chwały Tyś o Chryste, Tyś rodzica, Syn z wiek wieka, by świat zbawić swoim zgonem. Przy się człowieka nie wzgardziłaś Panny łony, tyś pokruszył śmierci wrota, stary oście męki dobie i rajski kraj żywota, otworzyłeś wierny w sobie, o prawicy siedzisz Boga. Ojca, Syn jedyny, lecz Ty zacz mi trąba z roga, przyjdzie sądzić ludzkie czyny, prosim słudzy łask nie zgodni, wspomóż odmy grzech co plami. Obie Panie zaufały, nie zawstydzę się na Dzwonimy się i przyszłość opłaty się dzwonimy. 